G'day guys. Uh, today I'm here with Sven Hubert. How are you, Sven? Good, how are you? Not too bad. Um, and I've got Sven because he is uh, one of the TFS and ALM gurus from Germany. And he's built this uh, platform for extending TFS. Is that right? Yeah, it's called TFS ASAP. And it's basically a platform to automate your server-side plugins and to have some common administration platform for them. So to be able to extend TFS on the server side. Great. So this is not for a small shop. This is for a larger shop wanting to that's that's serious about TFS, and then they want to take it well beyond the default out of the box installation, right? Correct. So we added some default functionality right now to extend the work item tracking. So to let's say fit the enterprise purposes. Okay. Okay. Let's check it out. Yeah. So. So most uh, customers have some questions around the work item tracking. So for example, how can I aggregate um, numbers across the hierarchy of work items? So I assume that you have a large number of requirements, you aggregate them uh, using the effort field, for example. So you want to know what's the effort of this feature being you know, tracked down into product backlog items and things, or being able to do the suspect linking thing, which I'll show later. Okay. And you want this in a in a scalable fashion. So TFS can handle millions of work items. You have work item changed events for that. And you want to leverage the load balancing features of TFS for these work item changed events. So you want to react on it in a, in a plug-inable mechanism thing. So you want to do your custom rules and stuff. So I, okay. And uh, I can see that it, it's not a free solution, is it? Uh, we thought about that because we serve, <clears throat> we provide other free solutions. Mm. but. Uh, unfortunately, every time <coughs> sorry, TFS updates uh, are coming from mm -hmm. Microsoft, we have to update the platform because there are some server-side changes. So the right. API changes, and so we have to care about all this. And uh, customers ask us, are there some maintenance plans for that? We, we, we would be happy to pay if we don't have to adopt every TFS update and do some changes. So you do it for us, and that's why we did a commercial product. All right, and we'll find out the price a bit later on. Yeah. Okay, all right, cool. So my first my first sample is uh, the time tracking uh, plugin. So TFS lacks the ability to be able to book some hours on a distinct date in time. So mm -hmm. if you go to a work item and fill in the uh, remaining work fields or com completed work fields, it will be booked for today. So all the re reports and all these things will assume that you book most hours for today. What we did is we created a first sample plugin which does the time tracking using a custom field. So you see the current work field here, which um, is basically your input field. As soon as you type something in, so you have to have a work item customization here, of course, uh, you will be presented with a work date field. So there you can change your date and click save and the work item uh, tracking will, or our plugin will take care of, you know, adapting remaining work and completed work. And in the background, the reporting uh, will be there to uh, actually see that this four hours have been booked to the 8th of November in this case. So you will be able to easily create, and actually we, we will deliver such report um, in order to track, let's say, on, on a weekly basis, which person did which hours on, on what tasks. And uh, this is a reporting services report driven out of the queue, I guess? Exactly. So this is a RDL file, which we will deliver. So everything is also populated to the cube, so you will see those numbers in Excel also if you connect to the cube. Yeah. Great. So the next sample, I basically mentioned it already, it's the num numerical aggregation. So imagine this large hierarchy of requirements you have, and you have those effort fields and estimation fields, and you want to aggregate those across fr or from children to parent items. So you want to see what's the, the sum of effort I have on this feature due to its breakdown into those product backlog items. So basically, this is uh, the parent will be summed up due to some configuration things. So we have this plugin uh, that takes care of all the aggregation and all the consistency checks. So uh, assume that some changes uh, were left behind because of some updates you, you apply to TFS. We take care of it. So you will have a consistent aggregational uh, field value thing in, in, in your hierarchy. So uh, which will do the work for you, basically. And so in a PBI, I will be able to see a sum of the children tasks. 
for example, so if, okay. if you configure so, so you can configure what fields aggregate to what fields and what hierarchy linking you want to use. So it's basically configurable using XML files on, on the server side. Okay. And you can simply add your fields and, and do your aggregation. So, so this is an extremely commonly requested thing by clients. Are you surprised the TFS team haven't done this already? Yeah, I have been surprised first, first hand, but then they implemented that and got to the point where we saw that this is actually quite complicated to implement. Uh, you could hook up the iSubscriber event for yourself and then do all this implementation work, mm. but we really did some efforts here to provide support for all the linking changes. As, assume that you simply drag and drop some tasks to another requirement, so you have to do the aggregation uh, again. So it, it's not just changing values, it's also changing the complete hierarchy structure. And, and this has given us a hard time, but we did it. So it's a proven solution we, we already have at customers. Fantastic. So another aggregation uh, use case would be to aggregate states. So imagine all of your requirements, they have s child tasks, and if mm -hmm. all the child tasks are done, you want the requirement to be in a resolved state, so meaning ready mm -hmm. for test automatically. So we do that also, it's also configurable. You could do it with the Scrum template also. The product backlog item could automatically be put into the state committed as soon as one task goes into in progress. Something like that. As, as I said, you can configure it to your process templates also. So I, I'm hearing that you're giving us a framework to go ahead and implement these things, but it, it's quite a common thing that people want when the last, um, you know, the last bug is closed, that the PBI is set to done. Why don't you just out of the box fix all these common problems in TFS? Um, yeah, we, we are working on a on a set of plugins, mm. especially designed for the Scrum right. template. I so. Got it. In order to get all those use cases, but we are working with some Scrum experts, uh, as, right. as you are, in order to get those use cases uh, and implement those. So currently, you would you would be able to do such things mm. right now, but you would have to have the configuration effort to do so, that. So your, your product at the moment is a platform to go and implement all the different uh, things you want to fix. It's not uh, install this and TFS is automatically fixed for you. It, it's both. So uh, the standard edition of our tool is basically the, the last thing you set. It's, you set it up, it's a simple MSI installation, you don't have to configure anything even. It's simply set up and running. And it's doing all the standard tasks I show you here. And that's the enterprise edition which we deliver, which mm -hmm. allows you to have your custom plugins and implement a, a basic interface. You don't have to care about error reporting and, and load balancing and things. Um, where you can do your own stuff. Uh, our goal is to have a broad set of plugins mm. being delivered to you out of the box, which you can easily configure, and then you're good to go. So we all in one fix TFS. Your, th your thing doesn't just provide additional functionality, it also changes the data structure of the TFS process template as well, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Will that provide any problems in upgrading to future versions? Uh, it will, because of uh, the API changes, but you will have the some, same problems if you do the iSubscriber implementation for yourself. So we fix it uh, with a maintenance plan we, we give you. So you can uh, have a maintenance contract and we will deliver all the TFS updates uh, for the TFS ASAP platform as well. Got it. So one of the uh, next changes or the, the next plugin is the Suspect Link plugin. Um, and this plugin helps you to not to get lost in the big hierarchy of requirements which you maybe change late in your progress. So uh, imagine that you have a large uh, hierarchy and you, you change one re requirement which is already, let's say, in progress or something. You want to easily know which other requirements are impacted. So you want so I'd love to know the war story of, of when this first came about, when you first noticed this uh, hole in TFS. Actually, it was a compete against another tool, right. another ALM tool, which did provide that. And we had some... Which tool? Uh, it's Polarion. Uh, so it's a version-based ALM tool. Um, and it was a customer uh, in this or safety space, so in the safety domain. And they had to do all this reviewing, and they had to prove that they cared about all the impact the change had on a reviewed item. So they had to have an easy solution to query all of those impacted items within a large hierarchy of requirements. Was this something that the company wanted 
for themselves or is was this a compliance requirement that the, because they were some government organization? It was both. It, it was a requirement for themselves. They wanted to be able to easily track what rework they would have to do, but they needed to do the or needed to comply to the audits from the government as well. So, and, and I both. expect in Germany you have a lot of quality uh, requirements. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of uh, automation and machinery domain, so mm. they have all those safety things going on. So yes, there's a big demand for them. My wife, she will only she's very proud of all her German things because they're the most expensive thing. She's got these German knives, and she's very proud because they're so, such good quality. So I, ex I expect nothing less than. Okay, so this is a sharp tool as well. So yes. yeah, okay. So what we basically do is, um, if you change something in the work item hierarchy. We also change the impacted uh, work items. So we set a field to yes, suspected field. You, you can also see videos of, of this on, on our website uh, in action. Um, and you will get a link type, a special link type to the impacted work item. So you can easily navigate through the hierarchy and you can also query for all the impacted changes after you did maybe a set of changes. Um, so it's an easy way to, to navigate through your impacted uh, changed work items. Great. Uh, we also have a plugin called the Daily Status Mail. So imagine all of the work item alerts which you get per mm -hmm. day if you register to, let's say, my assigned work items or something. Um, have you ever had um, an email every time uh, a product owner changes the priority of an item? Yeah, for example, th this is really annoying. So <laughs> Very. Uh, uh, so that's why we, we did that. And it's basically a, a scheduled plugin. So despite the fact that we have those triggered plugins reacting on the work item change event or other events in TFS, we have these scheduled plugins, which uh, you can run daily, weekly, or on whatever schedule you like. And one of the out-of-the-box plugins, uh, out plugins is the daily, daily status mail, which you can configure using a work item query. And it will send you an email once per day in case some work items appear on this result list. Right. This query. Sometimes I would want it to be even more intelligent and kind of work out when the the product owner or the developer has actually finished working. I know it's not very easy, but you know, some you if they haven't made a change in the last hour, then it kind of looks like they've probably finished working that type of thing. But yeah, once a day is fine. Yeah. So. If we look at the administration point of view, if you install TFS ASAP on your TFS app tier, and you have to install it on any app tier you have for your instance, mm -hmm. um, you will get an experience in, in the web browser for administrating your plugins, basically. So you, here you see the entry point for our website uh, on the TFS app tier again, which lists on the left-hand side all the collections and team projects, and you can simply turn it on and off to react on those work item change events. And on the right-hand side for an individual team project, you can configure basically which rules apply for this team project. Good. So we are looking also into having some automatic configuration. So based on the template you're using, additional plugins apply. If you're using the Scrum template in your team project and so forth, but this is something we are looking into. So right now you you get the basic set of rules being switched on per default and you can switch it off if you if you like. Yeah, from a technical point of view, uh, since we are all geeks and interested in okay. techniques, so um, basically we are hooking up into the application pool of, of the TFS services. So we are in the same process to do the, the iSubscriber thing. So uh, if you install TFS ASAP, you don't have to configure anything. You just have to be a TFS administrator. We ha hook into the application pool of IIS, the same as TFS, mm -hmm. TFS uses. So we are in the TF service account domain. So we can do anything there. Is there any parts when there's an IS reset? Uh, there is an IS reset. Um, our user guide definitely tells you that. So there's a special hint that it will be an IS reset. So there might be some interruptions, but no inconsistencies. But yes, there is an IS reset in between. We can get around that. Um, but the nice thing is that we, we can now hook into all the other things of TFS. So, for example, we have a configuration and, and job queue database to mm -hmm. not forget any jobs as in case you do a reset after someone changed the work item. Uh, if the machine's up and running again, the job will be processed, so nothing's get lost. Uh, so we, we will deploy the ASAP database on the data tier of TFS, for example, and we leverage the TFS job queue uh, to do a plug-in work on, on the load balancer. Okay. 
so from a from an execution point of view, after the, the event is processed, put into the job queue, we will then delegate it via the TFS job agent to our plugins. Uh, it's a yeah, program deer uh, which contains all the DLLs for the plugins, and you can basically, in the enterprise edition, deploy your own plugins there. Right, okay. So, um, again, it's a proven solution. We have it up and running for, let's say, two years now. So we have already some, some customers talking about that. So we have some customers using the standard edition. They don't need any additional plugins. They just to do time tracking and, and effort aggregation across hierarchies. Um, we have some customers using the update scenario. Are, are you saying that you have these three different versions here? Yeah, so it's basically the standard and the enterprise edition. Right. And the standard edition, you can, you can buy it one time and, and basically remain at this level of, of support. So no TFS imagine, updates. And, I and can't imagine anybody would want to buy that version. Yeah, it could be that you say, okay, after two years, we are only updating up after two years. So maybe you say, okay, we are staying on that particular TFS version. We don't care. Um, let's just stay there. Right. So um, you get a s slight discount on the initial license if you buy the standard and the updates. So if you go for the maintenance plan, which is, I would say, uh, the usual entry point. And we have those enterprise customers doing custom plugin development and buying both, of course, the maintenance plan and the uh, license. So the standard license, for example, uh, applies to each and every app tier you have. So you have to buy one for every app tier. So if you do load balancing, um, we have to talk about the uh, Q&A scenario. They have some, some staging environment for your TFS. They do custom development mm. uh, in order to enable it there. Just contact us and we'll give you some offer for that. Uh, in the enterprise version, we cover all the app tiers you have, basically. Okay. And uh, what's the damage? <laughs> what's the damage? What's the cost? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the cost is um, 4,900 euro for the standard license, one license for all. We don't count any users. It's a server-side license. So uh, it applies to every app tier, okay, but normally you, you only have a single server. And uh, what's that in US dollars? Pardon? What's that in US dollars? Uh, US dollars depends on the uh, count, but it's approximately six thousand dollars. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, and the enterprise version it, it depends on how many app tiers you have and and what kind of plugin scenarios you have and and what support you want from us for your custom plugin development. So it's an individual offer. You have to contact us and we'll do yeah. the the offer for you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Ben. That was uh, awesome. I think uh, if you want to take your TFS enterprise scenario to another level this is uh, some really food, good food for thought thank you very much yeah thank you Adam. and with that this is adam kogan for ssw tv did you get all that we'll take the ssw tv quiz and test your knowledge now